<clears throat> so it looks like we have um, Brian and Kristen, Ron, Tammy, Tracy, June, and um, and a few others. Uh, so that's that's great. So what we'll do is, um, I'm not going to record the video uh, until I can figure out how to do it without it being invasive uh, to everyone. And I don't know how to do that yet. Um, I will record it um, on Spreaker and... Uh, Uncheck display names, which is second set. I think Tracy might have to teach me a little here. <laughs> so, um, cool. Let's see here. I'm just going to go ahead and mute everyone, not that everyone isn't already muted. Okay. Alrighty. Great. Well, let's go ahead and uh, and get started. So tonight we're going to talk about I'm going to have to take these off. My hearing has been strange lately. Um, not as good as it should be, and I, sometimes I don't know from what angle I'm dealing with things, so, anyway, I think I can hear better now with, the, with these things out, so, Lord, we look for your impartation tonight. Uh, we're talking about ground that I think everyone to some extent has a knowledge of or uh, an awareness of. Um, but we might be digging around a little deeper to understand a little bit more about access. Because that's really... Um, what I'm looking for is to find the keys to accessing the Lord. And I know that um, He has put within us the answers and the keys um, that we need. Let's see here. Yep. So, Lord, we need a little help here this evening, or we could we could take a lot of help, whichever you want to give us. Um, it's been a little bit of a of an odd day and an odd night. I almost can't was going to cancel the call, just um, really working through, uh, breaking through myself. Um, just because of the level of resistance that we've been dealing with, but uh, you know what? We'll we'll go with it, and and uh, and if I need to revisit the topic, we'll revisit it because I know there are things that I have questions about, and I'm looking for greater clarity um, in our access to the Lord. I know that we're in the time of his presence. Uh, the time that we have access. But a lot of it, at times, can be very much contingent upon what we're aware of. And do we realize that we have access? Uh, and how do we access the Lord? 
you know, once again, getting out of our paradigm of how we have approached the Lord, how we have seen Him. And um, that is something that plagues all of us because as, as much as God brings us into new things, if we're not careful, that which is new becomes old. You know, like um, the manna of yesterday. And rather than helping us, it becomes a deterrent to us. So we have to be very careful that in what the Lord gives us, we, we hold it lightly and we receive from the Lord what He is imparting to us, what He wants us to absorb and grasp. Um, but as, as equally, we're pliable that when He's ready to bring something that's going to be a building block, that He is able to do that. And it's not so much that we would have a resistance to the next step or the next thing that he wants to show us it's that's not it you know he's really done a good job in working deeply within us but we can get these default ways of thinking default approaches of how we see stuff and we don't even realize that when we go to look that we're already looking through a lens that, you know, was fine for yesterday, but now it becomes a limitation, and we don't even realize it. We don't even realize that we're approaching something that um, that we need to let go of one way and reach into the new. So I know I'm being a little big, um, <laughs> but... I'm just trying to kind of put my fingers on the changes that are happening within us and the shifting of our paradigm, uh, how we have seen things, and just reaching in, allowing the Lord to, to, you know, it's like the Word says, I will take away the first in order to establish the second. I think it's in Hebrews, I believe. How often he must have, how often he's probably been working with us on that, trying to, you know, we get something from the Lord, <laughs> and it's so precious, and we, you know, we love what what he's done, uh, but then we have to let go of it, and just when you are getting a little bit comfortable on whatever aspect of it that God had brought you into, uh, whatever perception, whatever insight, whatever understanding, um, then he says, okay, now you've got to let that go so that I can bring you into something greater. And really, very often we, we don't we don't realize what's going on in the background of ourselves. We don't even realize that, oh, I need to let go of something here. Uh, I didn't even realize I was holding on to something. Uh, I didn't realize I was approaching something uh, in a way that was fine for yesterday, but now it becomes a limitation today. And so... Um, that's, you know, part of the challenge that we're constantly faced with. But um, we touched on, for a moment, um, this whole thing of vortexes the other night. And we didn't really go very far with it. I didn't really feel a leading to go much further because then I would have to kind of open up a backside of of things that you know we've experienced that I don't you know they would be interesting, but it it wouldn't achieve what uh, 
what, we're, what we were addressing. So it was, you know, better not to go down that road. But I, I titled this word Frequency Part 3. Now, I know we had a part one. I'm sure we had a part two. Maybe somewhere there's a part three somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> but what we're addressing tonight has to do with the time of 3 a.m. every morning. And I wanted to just talk about this. Um, once again, this might be adding confirmation, adding some insight to what you you already know. But the, the spirit realm is, is fascinating. You know, God is so such a scientific spirit and you know he is not a religious spirit satan is the religious spirit god is very scientific um not mental but very scientific and and there's structure and order and reason you know behind everything that um you know he sets up and that is part of the whole realm of the spirit and, you know, the more you get into it and you begin to, you know, get your sea legs and begin to to learn about the spirit world, learn about your access, about your position in God. I mean, so much of it can go back to just simply taking something simple, you know, like knowing your position in God uh, as a believer much less taking it further as a son. And then to really understand what, what are the dynamics of that? What, what does it mean to have uh, access? Uh, it's, it, you know, we're constantly looking to take the word off the page where it's, a print, it's something in print. And you read it and you... You know, you bear witness to it, but it's still on the it's still on the page. And God is endeavoring to take it off the page and write it on our heart, <laughs> which we know that scripturally, and we've quoted it many times. But the reality of it is the process of writing it on our heart is bringing us into an experience that can never be taken from you and and it, it changes you so um, this is all very interesting so many many years ago the Lord began to teach us about the different times of the day uh you, you know, you have the four watches of the day, the first, the second, third, and like the fourth watch. And you have the night watchman. And and, and I think there's a scripture here that says, uh, it's in Luke. Um, well, it says, if you shall come in the second watch, will come in the third watch and find them so. Blessed are those servants. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are... Well, I didn't print the rest of that. <laughs> you can fill it in. But, um... So... There's different... Different points in the day where there is greater access and the, the veil becomes much thinner at certain timelines in the day where you can experience a breakthrough far easier or if you're you know in really which comes down to the hours of three to four in the morning I mean, there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there about the third watch, which is at midnight and, you know, all the dark and evil and, you know, all that, you know, whatever. 
uh, and um, which you know means nothing to me. Uh, you know, there is a lot of activity in those hours of the evening, um, but as the veil gets thinner and thinner, uh, you find that you you have the opportunity to have a breakthrough far easier. And I have wanted to work with that and really try and understand it a little bit more. I know that when Christ died, it was at three o'clock in the afternoon. Here we're talking about 3 a.m. in the morning. And it said that when he died, the veil was rent, was torn in two. And, you know, we are on the receiving end of so much of what the Lord has done. But we've been slow to to understand it, slow to know what to do with it. Uh, the scripture talks about how the, the, the children of light uh, are slow. I'm paraphrasing terribly, but slow to come to the understanding of these principles uh, of the spirit and all of that, whereas the children of darkness, you know, are further down the road. But that's been changing for quite some time. And so there are things that we have in our duffel bag, you might say, that um, we can use if we... um, knew that we had it uh, to use. And um, I've been very much determined to see a greater access through the veil. And I know that um, most of the deep meetings that I've had with the Lord have come usually any time from 1 to 1 to 5 in the morning uh, and principally you know uh, you could probably say between 2.30 and, and 4 or so and, and it was nothing that I did of my own volition and I can't say that I had it wired and I was really focused and in the zone um <laughs> I remember many years ago, growing up, um, and I'd be setting the alarm clock, and we've probably all done that. And it's okay, I'm getting up at three o'clock, and and it would be a heck of a time to get up at three o'clock for me. Um, Now, it, it seems I'm up half the night anyway. Because the slightest thing that happens uh, wakes me up, and um, and then I'm aware of of things that are unfolding and going on in the spirit. But it wasn't always like that. It was uh, a definitely an uphill battle to get position uh, where you could take advantage of that access and you know I was thinking the other day about really what it means when you know when the Lord said okay at 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. principally the veil is at its thinnest you know uh, the, the demon world knows that to some extent and they that's when they they do their stuff Midnight, one, two in the morning, whatever. Um, but there's something that we have, and I, I want to uh, see if we can find a way to access it uh, more deeply. Because when you think about it, you know we've talked about frequency and vibration. And everything in the spirit world, everything in God is about frequency and energy and vibration. And um, which, you know, can sound new age, 
but it just is. You know, everything has a frequency to it. Uh, everything. And it's just knowing how to to work within the framework of what God has created uh, within the kingdom as uh, governing the spiritual principles. You know, we don't necessarily address it that much on the physical plane, uh, but it definitely is a, uh, a reality in the spirit, this whole thing of frequency and, and vibration, energy. And so the times that I've had the, the greatest breakthroughs with the cloud of witnesses have been in, the, in that early morning hours. And, um, but it's not like you can go in and control it. I think the best that we can do is to position ourselves and say, Lord, here I am. You know, what would you speak to me this morning? And a lot of times, I would say a great majority of the time, that which would come would come almost with a, 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 a vibration that you experience. You could almost say, well, you're, you're half asleep, or maybe you think you are asleep, um, or you're in a daze, or any number of things. You don't even realize maybe what state you're in. But you, you are able to move into what we've called the, the theta state, the certain uh, frequency of the brain, where the brain just shuts off. You know, the last thing we want is the brain to be in the way anyway. And so the brain progressively shuts down. You're not in the delta uh, uh, vibration or frequency pattern, which is sleep, but you're, you know, a step before that or two steps before that. And in that theta state is the, the point where everything begins to cross over. And your mind, to whatever degree it's still coherent, is not able to differentiate between realities and what is coming to you from the spirit is as tangible, is as real, is as, uh, well, tangible, I guess, as the natural plane. And the, the mind cannot separate between the two because you've entered that crossover point where the two realities are simultaneously happening to you. And you find um, that you actually begin to react to the spirit world. Your body begins to react to the spirit world uh, as if there was something physically touching you. And um, and I know that there is going to be a great deal more, uh, more of this where we, we cross over. I mean, we're in a time of transition, uh, of living in two worlds at the same time. And that was a word that came from the Lord back in the 1950s, way, way back in some of the things we studied, we saw that word begin to come. And so we're in this transition out of this level of life and this level of awareness into literally walking in two worlds at the same time. 
and I know that we're walking in two worlds at the same time. I know that uh, that is valid, that is what's happening. But there's a great deal more awareness on our part that we need and an understanding of what we can do with the access that we have. But we don't know quite that we have it. You know, it was like the word I shared with you guys a while back when the Lord was talking to me about sight and a couple of things. And he says, you don't see because you don't believe that you can see. Therefore, you don't see, but you do see. It's like, my son, you see. All of you see. But because you don't believe that you see, you don't see. <laughs> and and so it's like, okay, I've got no argument with that, Lord, but now let's, let's get on the other side of that. Okay? And let's just get past this transitory level. And, I, and that's what we're in, the, part of what we're in the throes of. This transition from one level to another. And I know it's not as simple as just having a, a change of your vibration where you, you feel your energy is higher, you know, and you, you sense the presence of the Lord. Everything is just clear because you're on a different uh, uh, level. This is kind of like a life-changing thing where you're birthed, if we want to use that term, even more deeply into the kingdom um, and we've been pressing into this for quite some time and so going back to uh, the timelines I know that that um, a lot of what is happening and is going to happen are is not initially something that we can control. Uh, at least I haven't had great luck controlling. Um, it just happens. God just happens to you. And so what we can do is position ourselves. Lord, I'm positioned before you. I'm taking this timeline. You know, even if it's just 10 minutes where I wake up and in 10 minutes, I, I'm just committing everything to you and I'm looking to you. And now, Lord, I'm sliding back into sleep, whatever. But there's that point, you, you're positioned before him. And then he can break through. And um, we find it happening more and more. Um, and it's beginning to occur during the day now a little bit and uh, you know so it's just very interesting you know if you've ever watched um, uh, when we hit that um, that transition of you know day to night I what they call it um, twilight and in some circles uh, of those who have approached me, they have said, well, we call it white night. And, and so that's fine. White night, twilight. But you're in that changing of the guard timeline. And that is when we see some of the initial breakthroughs through the veil beginning to come. Because I do believe that the spirit world you know, God's side of it would love more interaction with the sons as we would love more interaction with them. But it's being carefully orchestrated, uh, which I don't necessarily understand. Um, but it's just, it's how the Lord is doing it. But I know that we're being brought into something far greater than what we have. And so anything that we can do 
three o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock at, 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 at twilight uh, or three in the morning. Um, we're, now I'll kind of wrap this up, but we've talked about the fact that we have been birthed into an ocean of spirit. I think I talked about that in the first book. And so, as we go throughout our day and evening, we are immersed in the world of spirit. You can't separate that. It's part of living in two worlds. And so, as we go about our day, we are reacting and and in a rea- responding to what is happening in the spirit world. It's affecting us, we're affecting the realm of spirit, and it's only going to continue more and more. And especially when you realize that God has put the sons in a position to be a plumb line in the earth, a plumb line for judgment, a plumb line for uh, a measurement, you might say. And that is what you are. That's what we are. You're not walking around looking to pick a fight. You're not walking around looking to judge anybody, you know. But um, nevertheless, your presence generates a response. People are, they don't have a choice. When they meet you, when they are around you, uh, the presence of God will evoke that response. It, it just happens. And uh, much to our chagrin, we would love to say, okay, Lord, can we have a, a week off? <laughs> but there is no time off. Um, you are what you are. He has created you as he has created you. And... Um, and it is only going to get more intense, you know, as this time goes on. Well, I think that's about all that I want to talk about this evening. I just wanted to bring up this whole thing about the third and the fourth watch and the reality of the thinning of the veil. And it's almost like if you if you could imagine looking at a uh, a sheet and that sheet is what separates this side of reality from the kingdom from you know that level and so after you wash a sheet a number of times it begins to get threadbare and then eventually you have to throw it out but the veil is beginning to get very threadbare which means it's becoming more easy to see through it Um, and especially if you know that this is what's happening then you know you expect you anticipate you know okay um, this veil is passing away. It's, it's getting thinner and thinner, which means that the, that which comprises the whole texture of the veil uh, or comprises what it is, is beginning to disintegrate. And, and so you're, you're, beginning to have an ability by your spirit to pass through that veil and the cloud of witnesses are beginning to have that opportunity to pass through the veil over to you and that's why we've seen more and more activity with them but this is where we are we're you know we're looking at a at a a veil that is a great deal of an illusion because it's passing away and it's become very threadbare. It's still there and, you know, and 
depending upon how you believe, it could be a concrete wall if, if you believe that there's that much of a substantive separation. But the fact is it's very thin and so much so that you can look through and see to the other side. And, and I'll close with one unusual experience that came, oh, three, four years ago. Uh, I was in the midst of warfare and in vision, I found myself in an ancient castle. So it'd be an interesting story. Uh, I was there, but I wasn't there. So I know that my consciousness was there, my spirit was there. The rest of me, I'm not really sure where it was, but I was tracking in that level. And, you know, I walked around the room for a minute, and then I, there was a big picture window in front of me. So I looked out through the picture window which could have been representative of the veil. And I saw into a valley below. And I knew I was somewhere in Europe, like Romania or something like that. And as I watched, I, I saw people uh, moving and going about. And I, I could see another castle, which they have in that area of the country or world, um, it, it stood tall in the background. And the more I began to look, I saw a car driving up uh, quite a distance away, but it was driving towards where I was located. And I realized that this was um, a, uh, a witch of a very high order that had uh, her um, place of location there. So I watched it for another minute, just curious what, would I, what, what I was experiencing. And the next moment, uh, her face appeared on the other side of the window. And I realized then at that point that she had now seen me. And... Um, and so I was immediately led to close the shutters and it, um, the wall disappeared. And so therefore the access uh, from that part of the veil through to where I was, was shut down. But it was something I had to do. But it was an interesting experience because we were dealing with a very threadbare veil between levels and um, and I think this will be very interesting to, to monitor to, to watch what happens you know for you in experiencing your your access and movement uh, because more of this is going to happen uh, because things are threadbare um, and we should be expecting uh, some experiences, things that um, will probably help redefine our reality again. Um, and the more it redefines it, the more we realize that we are unlimited. Uh, and we can say that, you know, you're unlimited, I'm unlimited, and we believe that. And we do. But we don't walk into that reality yet because we really haven't fully believe what we've become in God. And the more that we enter into the reality of what we've become in God, the greater threat we are to everything in the world of spirit. Because this involves the manifesting of the sons of God. Well, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and shut this down. Um, and uh, we'll do another call here sometime next week. In the interim, I'll work out a few more of my learning curve 
the details. Uh, in the interim, uh, Ann and I send our blessing, our love, and it's time to to break into some great things. So we lose all of you, lose myself, lose Ann. This is the time of breaking through, breaking through the veil. There's so little of it, it isn't going to take as much effort as we thought to break through this veil. And if we have to do it at three in the morning or whatever, then, you know, I'm game. You know, Lord, that's what I'm doing. I mean, there are times when I get up and I'm like, okay, what do I do? And I have no idea. So then I hop in the car and take a drive and we just talk. But um, it's time to take advantage of the access we have and the open door that God is setting before us that uh, is going to be part of a whole new walk in God. So we bless you guys, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Amen.